Bengali news today is first of the 161 towers launched today. Rural Wash Change Makers Award launched to promote hygiene advocacy. And World Water Day celebrations in Honiara. Hello and welcome, I'm Gina Kikia. We start with grave news from Chozo province where a tragic accident has resulted in the loss of a life. According to the police commissioner during his weekly press briefing, the incident involved a logging vehicle. So the incident was happening along the road where the like we have logito who are logging camp, this one of Chozo, and happened on number 11 of March. This was a dump truck, and we used for carrying enough fuel at the back of the uh, trailer. Ablo looking at no looking at camp water on top of the bush for uh, supplying my fuel water that truck to our truck to lower that looking at trucks. So as truck and play Ablo Hill, this one uh, tank water put him behind where storing my fuel there yeah, and we break off from chain there. Yeah. So this one a victim and see down behind with him water fuel there. Yeah. So this one uh, a tank, a fuel tank here yeah, and we bang him down this one a victim here yeah, and he pulled down from track here. Yeah. So the victim said never had me sustained with some injury because of the fuel that they put in the so this one are tanky and heavy. So the rest of this one go across the center for emergency uh, uh, evacuation for police or for uh, medical attention. However, what I know is rescue my life with the silver person, so I'm losing my life there. Police Commissioner Mangao extended heartfelt condolences to the family of the victim and emphasized the importance of prioritizing safety within the logging industry. It's a reminder for our people as well too when we work the work company or sometimes we may be missing for negligent safety being deliver. So it's quite important for me to consider my safety when we may, we may, we may go out of uh, uh, operations of them or other activity of them. In addition to the fatal incident in Choizol, Commissioner Mangao also highlighted a homicide in the Kukum area earlier this month. Our national criminal investigation, Lohia Lohonyara, or the attending uh, this report, and arresting this was 17 year old suspect for alleged murder of Kukum Heights. This one happened in the last week, normal Lohia Lohonyara. The, the uh, incident happened when uh, a 37-year-old uh, uh, male can be dropped from uh, a taxi and then walk towards a residence at the main road and ask those group of boys who were at the uh, uh, side road for cigarettes. However, the uh, suspect can be under uh, influence of uh, liquor, but the mother boys were at the down when this old man approached the motor, the front of the and uh, when this one disease and we walk off from water, this one uh, suspect will follow after this one uh, uh, disease. Yeah. Not far from where I want to sit down, they must hold him this one disease from behind head to head, and this one uh, disease and fall down the ground unconscious. So the boys here want to approach and separate him, and the brother of this one disease with them other two boys have taken the disease here asking for hospital for attention. However, I don't know, so I was uh, able to rescue this old person and then with my name and pronounced dead at the uh, National Federal Hospital. Mangao also made an appeal to the public to support the police in its investigations. Today marks a significant milestone for the government's tower project as the first tower was officially launched at the telecom compound. Caretaker Prime Minister Manase Songavare launched the event by making and receiving the first call from the Sali Tower located in North Guru Canal. These are some of the services that are available for this well, this well, this well project by Mr. Toto Pro Boys and also by Mr. Luki Bilchan. The uh, system, ladies and gentlemen, when all switched, uh, switch on will cover, as we heard, um, another 200,000, I think, 200,000 uh, of our people, uh, thereby increase uh, nationwide coverage to more than what? 80 percent. 80 percent of our people. The, uh, this improved coverage will, uh, as we heard, uh, enable more rollout of services uh, to our people because uh, of increased, uh, increased coverage. Increased access to uh, incre increased access and connectivity will allow our government, uh, private uh, sector and institutions to uh, target more people 
to serve uh, than before. The project has uh, how many years? Two years to run. Two years uh, to run, and uh, we are hopeful uh, to uh, deliver all. And as we heard, by 2025, everything going up. And as we heard, the benefits, e-education, um, e-health, e-government, uh, e-commerce, etc., will be easy. Will be easy to roll out, and uh, Solomon Islands can can tick uh, most of the uh, sustainable uh, development goals, and we are which we have been able to uh, achieve uh, over the over the years. Um, electronic voting uh, can be possible in uh, 20. Uh, 2028, 20, 20, as uh, coverage will uh, have increased in the uh, next uh, four years. So everything will be easy now. Under the Solomon Islands National Broadband Infrastructure Project, a total of 161 towers are planned for construction across the country. This initiative, overseen by Huawei China Harbor Engineering Company Limited, aims to boost connectivity throughout the country. Solomon Telecom Company Limited serves as a crucial operating partner, facilitating the integration of the broadband system with its core network. We at Telecom are always striving towards the goal of continuing to provide reliable, world-class communication services, digital financial services, such as our mobile money, MCLN, and help to accelerate the digital transformation of the country. We are pleased that this project is exactly in line with our vision. In an age where communication is the lifeline of development and innovation, especially critical given the dispersed geographical nature of our islands, the establishment of this mobile tower signifies our continued commitment to bridging gaps, connecting our people and fostering economic growth. Today, the launch of the first mobile tower at Sali will be the first of many mobile towers that will complement telecom's tower infrastructure and enhance communication and connectivity in our communities across the country. Our happy else. As you may recall, we started on this journey around 2021. And I can fairly and very well understand telecom and STL sign uh, agreement to start this journey. Initially, the government targeted the completion of the first 48% of the 161 towers before the Pacific Games in November last year. Since the project's finalization in 2022, the Sali Tower represents the first launch under this bold initiative by the DCGA. The Provincial Governance Service Delivery Project has announced the launch of the Rural Wash Changemakers Award. This initiative aims to recognize individuals and groups who have made significant contributions to improving wash, water, sanitation, and hygiene services, raising awareness and advocating for marginalized communities' rights, uh, marginalized communities' rights to essential services. We want to stop open defecation in Solomon Island. We want to make sure water and sanitation, water sanitation and hygiene facilities are uh, expanded. The government and the policy maker are taking this thing forward with, you know, proper financing, proper investment and budgeting for the provincial government who are very close to the community to support the wash in particularly in schools, healthcare facilities and the community as a whole so that people can get benefit out of it. As we are launching this thing, we are expecting we will be, you know, uh, with the media support and the social media support, we will be encouraging the uh, potential awardee to apply for this award uh, for the individuals, for the organization who have been contributing in this country in terms of promoting wash service delivery. We want to recognize their contribution through this little award. So the initiative is started. Uh, and they could apply uh, from tomorrow to until uh, 30th September. Yes, the criteria is if you feel that you are the champion, you are the innovator, you are actually promoting the worst service to the community, 
either it is water or sanitation or hygiene behavior in the community as a whole or in wash in school or the healthcare service or even in the media. You people are in the media covering the good stories on wash service delivery will be happy to receive you uh, actually you, you, uh, you know stories that you have covered in your media. So there is one criteria for the media to be awarded for this thing too. Thank you. We have six criteria. The award ceremony is scheduled to take place on World Toilet Day, November 19 in Honiara. Today the world celebrates World Water Day with events happening worldwide. In the Solomon Islands from Beaufort Bay, Tangarare to Honiara, various organizations have organized celebrations. Various stakeholders joined forces today to mark World Water Day in Honiara under the theme Water for Peace. They are reminding me, everyone, uh, that water is very, very important. I mean, uh, apart from food industries or whatever, water has a cross cutting issue. I mean, cut them or embarrass every sector now. Agriculture, health, whatever, water. Now, today, Hemitrello reminded me that I'm scarce resources and scarce and many of Those who only serve taking water, okay, or accessing water, but those who are normal, but normal. But then, sometimes, time what I'm stuck by looking, pump it for him. for I mean, that fella has an accessibility. Like him, Solomon Island, he got him stuck water, yeah. But how enough for him come out of the, the tops blowing me? Uh, overseas, he me, I mean, he me got now fighting or war over water. He me no matter, yeah. But we can work together. All stakeholders, government, NGO, private sector, okay. He must work together because this all the resource is very important. So he me back conserve him, manage him, so, so, so that him sustainable and then him, him fairly distribute him. Suppose him no fairly distribute him, him by cause him not conflict. Or him say rawal water now. World Water Day held on 22 March every year since 1993 is a yearly event focusing on the importance of fresh water. World Water Day celebrates water and raises awareness of the 2.2 billion people living without access to safe water. So today I am important in terms of uh, awareness of water. Uh, what now water I am doing for immigrant and peace. So life will be because without water there will be no peace in the home. Like people can always complain that water I'm up for one or two days. So today I am, uh, am another time where I have come and do awareness. So what now importance to water and what now role where water and plain lo peaceful uh, living lo people. Uh, World Water Day, yeah. Me for us the children, me for also got a mother. projects in the past. I'm just finished now recently. Um, lo wash, COVID wash, where um, me for uh, support team at the schools, um, lo communities, lo Malaita and um, Western Province for also got um, um what a good improved wash facilities, yeah. Um, because we we understand the children's right uh, for current access, low um, quality and improved wash facilities. Um, also, no school yeah? because spam help and motor, uh, for the survey focus and uh, doing good school work up lot too. So, the World Water Day event also includes a celebration to mark World Med Services Day. The double celebration featured various activities, including display stalls, competitions, speeches, and entertainment, highlighting the critical link between meteorological and hydrological services. As several communities and sectors in the country are constantly affected by flooding events triggered by cyclones and heavy rains, this twin celebration serves as a reminder of the importance of addressing these challenges. This year's theme for World Meteorology Day, Frontline of Climate Action, resonates deeply with Sim's mandate as a frontliner 
in climate action. To be the front line of climate action, the Solomon Islands Meteorological Service is monitoring the state of the climate by operating 24-7 all year round. It is a challenging to have a climate observation network that is representative and sustainable, but despite these challenges, we continue to maintain and expand to various external funding opportunities and in partnership with development partners and regional agencies. On that note, I'm pleased to announce that this year through the World Meteorological Organization Systematic Observation Financing Facility software, we are working with UN, UNDP and the Australian Bureau of Meteorology and hope to upgrade all our manual stations. 